Thank you very much for your um, very kind and generous uh, introduction, Mr. Director. Ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellencies, I, I have been given very strict in instructions to tell you very, very briefly about the topography of the Kingdom of Lesotho, its history, its people, the tourism opportunities, the investment opportunities, the economy, and to encourage you to visit us when you have time. I'm very glad also to tell you that we have some video to to watch as I continue with my very short address. I also have some music. It's unfortunate that we don't have much of a dancing room in here. <laughs> we also have some traditional bites after the event to which you are all invited. It's a very delicious Lesotho meal. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the Kingdom of Lesotho is the only independent state in the world that lies entirely above 1,000 meters in elevation. It has an altitude of 3,400 meters at its highest, and its lowest point is 1,400 meters, making it the highest in the world. Known as the kingdom, known as the mountain kingdom, or the kingdom in the sky. Lesotho holds a wealth of memorial, memorable vistas of mountains, valleys, and rivers, as you can see on the video. The mountains provide Lesotho's crystal clear water of renowned clarity. This water feeds into numerous rivers and hydrates the country's abundance of green pastures, providing for its livestock and its beds. The mountains also yield Lesotho's other prolific mineral, the diamond. It is a democratic, sovereign, and independent country, which is located in Southern Africa, a totally landlocked state, completely surrounded by the Republic of South Africa, Lesotho's one and only neighbor. The name Lesotho translates into the land of the people who speak Soto. I have my Botswana colleagues here. They speak an improved Soto. <laughs> Formerly a British protectorate until independence in October 1966, the Kingdom of Lesotho is one of the only three remaining monarchies in Africa. It has a land area of approximately 32,000 square kilometers, roughly the size of Belgium or Taiwan. Located in the southern tip of Africa, it is completely outside the tropics and enjoys a cool, temperate climate. Commonly referred to as the Switzerland of Africa, it is blessed with a beautiful, often snow-capped range of mountains known as the Maluti. The kingdom's central position in the heart of, Africa, of Africa's most developed economy, the Republic of South Africa, is well served by air, rail, 
and roads, road links to all its major centers. The capital, which is Maseru, Maseru, ladies and gentlemen, that is the capital city of Lesotho. It is 600 kilometers away from South Africa's busiest harbor, Deben, and it is one hour's drive from Bloemfontein, a judicial and academic center in the Orange Free State. It is also only 45 minutes by air or four hours by road from Johannesburg, South African uh, economic hub. Lesotho is home to the largest and most ambitious civil engineering project in the whole of Africa the Lesotho Highlands Water Project, which has harnessed and commercialized her upstream surplus water resources, often referred to, bas to by Basotho as their white gold. Lesotho enjoys a high literacy rate at 82%. That has been further enhanced by free primary education program introduced by the government in in the year 2000. There are over 1,200 primary schools in Lesotho, placing every child within walking distance to a school. The economy is divided into three sectors. The primary sector, the secondary and tertiary sector contributing 12.75 to 9.48 and 57. 8 respectively. The manufacturing sector, one of the biggest, contributes 17.3% of, of the gross domestic product. Its history I will tell you in two sentences. Evidence of sands early inhabitants of Lesotho can be seen today in numerous cave paintings throughout the mountain kingdom. Basotho land was founded in the 1820s by its founder, Moshashwe the first, uniting various Soto groups who had fled the Zulus in the Guazulu Natal province in the Republic of South Africa. Moshashwe I brought his people to the stronghold of a district, administrative district, in the north of the country called Botabu Ute, and then the mountain of Tababusiu, about 30 kilometers outside Maseru, the capital. Still without peace, Moshashwa's territory was being picked off by the Trek Boers, who are nomadic pastoralist Dutch and Germans, incidentally, who were from the Cape. And he approached the British for aid. And in 1884, the Basotho land became the British Crown Colony. That is how far I can tell you about our short history, a journey to nationhood. The Soto government is a constitutional monarch system where the king is the head of state and largely serves ceremonial functions and does not actively participate in political initiatives, while the prime minister is the executive head of government. He conducts business, government business on behalf of the king through ministers and reports to the king on government issues every Wednesday of every week. The constitution is a very modern progressive piece 
which protects basic civil liberties, including freedom of speech, freedom of association, freedom of press, freedom of peaceful assembly, and freedom of religion. Lesotho is divided into 10 administrative districts, each headed by a district administrator. <coughs> it boasts a robustly independent functional judicature with a specialized commercial court for all commercial disputes. It held its first post-independence local government elections in 2005 and using a quota system that reserves one third of electoral divisions for women candidates. This, ladies and gentlemen, should indicate the seriousness of Lesotho in its quest for gender equality and to promote women in participation in politics and major decision-making processes. Its economy, its strength, economic strength as an investment destination lies in her investment security incentives, scenic beauty and rich cultural traditions. Lesotho occupies a unique geographical position being situated centrally within Southern Africa and with access to some of the fastest growing industrial and economic areas in the region, such as South Africa's Johannesburg, which I said is the economic capital of South Africa, Pretoria, the diplomatic capital, and Bloemfontein, the academic and judicial capital. It is also within reasonable proximity to international ports such as Deben and Cape Town. Combined with the efforts of the government of Lesotho to create a good enabling environment for business, this makes the country an attractive destination for foreign direct investment. A variety of unique investment opportunities are available in Lesotho and a range of useful services are offered by the Lesotho Tourism Development Corporation. I was supposed to be joined by the head of LTDC. I don't know if he has come yet. Investment opportunities that are available include the following. Accommodation facilities and resort developments. Tour operating and tour guiding activities. Boating excursions on dams, canoeing, and other water-related recreational activities. The ski resorts, equipment, and related services. High altitude sports training facilities and many water-related activities. The Lesotho Tourism Development Corporation provides a professional, professional services to investors both before and after investments, assists the foreign, the foreign in investors to obtain clearances that include residence permits, work permits, licenses, and provides investment advice. Lesotho is a signatory to the Convention on Settlement of Investment Disputes between states and is a member of the Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency. As a member of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, it has accepted the obligation of the Articles of Agreement, which gives confidence to the international community in its pursuit for sound economic policies, creating an unrestrictive multilateral payment system. For investors, Lesotho offers a highly competitive environment that is conducive and productive. The current 
investor package includes the following. A stable social and political environment that is in investor friendly with a free enterprise and free market economic system forming the basis for sustained development and growth. An abundant labor force that is predominantly English speaking, literate and well motivated with high productivity and competitive wage rates. Loan guarantees with long-term loans and or equity participation in the strategic projects. Declining water and electricity tariffs as a direct spin-off from the Lesotho Highlands water project. A favorable fiscal and financial environment has been created to promote an attractive investment climate in Lesotho with enticing tax rates. The other opportunities include tourism, as I have said, the development of, heli uh, of heliports to take advantage of the panorama of the, panorama of the Maluti Mountains, parachuting and hot air ballooning, adventure film locations, development of traditional arts, crafts, pottery, wool and mohair products, business and information call centers, conferencing, gate, getaway uh, uh, venues, and the establishment of gold estates. Lesotho offers natural beauty, rugged terrain, which you have seen, rich local culture and traditions, and permit-free playground for the more intrepid adventurer. Accommodation can be found in all regions of Lesotho. Some are serenely situated on the river banks, some on the mountain sides, and some at the highest altitude in southern Africa, totally surrounded by beautiful mountains and a peaceful environment. It is a land of heights and extremes, offering breathtaking mountain vistas and adventure activities such as skiing, pony trekking, hiking, and upsailing for the intrepid traveler. More leisurely pursuits for those seeking a relaxing and revitalizing break include bed watching, boating, and fishing. The water resources. When the thunderstorms erupt over the mountain, the, the Maluti Mountains, even the smallest stream can rapidly become a raging torrent. In winter, the melting ice trickle into freezing clear streams. Lesotho Highlands Water Project is a multi-billion Maluti by national water resource development and management initiative. It was established by a treaty signed between the government of Lesotho and the government of the Republic of South Africa in 1986 as a priority and strategy to reduce poverty, stimulate economic growth, and improve the livelihoods of the people of the two countries. The aim of this mega project is to harness the water of Lesotho, constructing massive dam walls, diverting the flow and transferring water to South Africa to meet the industrial and domestic water needs of the Gauteng province, while simultaneously providing hydropower for the people of Lesotho. Since the completion of the first phase of Lesotho Highlands Water Project, this water is transferred by gravity to the Republic of South Africa forging a long-term partnership between the two countries. The government of Lesotho has adopted a private sector-driven economic development and export-led industrial growth strategy. An essential part of the economy is an industry that comprises diamond mining, quarrying, construction, significantly manufacture of textile, garments, and footwear assembly of electronics and electrical appliances, trout breeding and fishing, water bottling, and food processing. 
Lesotho's trade and investment framework provides for a duty-free and concessionary access of Lesotho-made products into the Southern African Customs Union, SACU, Southern African Development Community, SADC, the United States of America under Africa Growth and Opportunities Act, AGUA, and to the EU under the SADC Economic Partnership Agreement, EPA. Lesotho's main exports to these markets comprise crude materials, diamonds, wool and mohair, manufactured goods, and water. One of the first initiatives undertaken by government under independence in 1966 was the formation of the Lesotho National Development Corporation and Lesotho Tourism Development Corporation in 2002. Both institutions are government's aim to encourage investment and assist in the development of tourism, commerce, and industry. The key responsibility of LNDC is to contribute to national economic growth and development by promoting Lesotho as an attractive and preferred investment location to both foreign and local investors. LNDC offers a wide range of investment supportive services, which include surfaced industrial sites, factory buildings, business support services, aftercare services, financial assistance, to support joint ventures with local investors. And where possible, limited equity participation in pro projects considered to be st of strategic importance to the economy. As is the case with many emerging economies, a substantial amount of capital has been channeled into the labor intensive activities such as clothing, foodware, tourism, and elect electronics as assembly. While Lesotho is very strong in these labor-intensive activities with special reference to the clothing and textile sectors, investment opportunities that exist, there are other opportunities that exist in other areas, such as garment industry integration, Automotive components, leather and footwear, assembly of consumer electrical and electronic appliances, food processing and water bottling, mining, renewable energy, pharmaceuticals, and infrastructure development. I want to I want to talk about the attractions in brief and move to the conclusion. Lesotho conjures up images of wilderness and adventure as it offers authentic nature and eco-tourism. Endless high altitude mountain streams offer a remote challenge for outdoor adventures. Lesotho's pursuit create one of the most varied adrenaline offerings in Southern Africa, with fishing, four by four treks, quad biking, pony trekking, hiking, and walking. One of my colleagues from Botswana was telling me about a walk from the south, from the north to the middle of the country. It stretches over <laughs> 30 kilometers on food, and it includes river crossings, dangerous stream crossings, and uphill climbing, and very steep, steep mountain descents. Lesotho is also home to the world-renowned off-road bike en endurance races, the Roof of Africa Rally as well as the popular Af Afri skiing and mountain resort in the area called Mathasela. Lesotho's mountains are kept with snow during the winter season, which is from May to August. Other notable characteristics of Lesotho are its claims as being the home of the longest and highest bridge 
in the Southern Hemisphere, as well as having the highest pub in the world at the sunny top chalet, which is 2.874 meters above sea level. The world's smallest fish, Maluti Mino, is found only in Lesotho rivers. Known as the roof of Africa or edge of the world, Lesotho's Tabanantlenyana is the highest peak in southern Africa at 3,482 meters. Its high altitude means that Lesotho has remained Belhazia and malaria free and has the cleanest air on the continent. It boasts a humble, culturally homogeneous people with wide stretching smiles to add to the hospitality of the adventure filled ecotourism destination. Basotho people are known to be warm and friendly and are, are often seen warmly wrapped in their colorful Basotho blankets and iconic grass heads called Mogorod. Lesotho's unique positioning gives it the advantage of offering a, a varied tourism experience. Different from the usual safari experiences in the Sadak region, the rich cultural heritage and diverse flora and fauna create unforgettable experiences. The fresh mountain air fills the lungs of all who visit and rejuvenates the body mind and soul. I wish to conclude by telling you about 10 things that you need to see and do when you are in Lesotho. The mountains. The mountain kingdom is abundant with spectacular, breathtaking mountain vistas. View Southern Africa's highest summit, Tabanantlenyan, as well as the Drakensberg and Maluti mountain ranges. Unspoiled and pristine nature. Ideal for nature enthusiasts, ecotourists, and adrenaline junkies, Lesotho allows for soft and extreme adventure experiences such as 206 meter upsail on the Malitsunyana Falls at Simongong, thin air mountain bike challenge, 4x4 trailing, pony trekking, hiking, and fishing. Unique to Africa, Lesotho offers winter skiing when fields of snow in the Maluti and Drakensberg mountains appear, creating magnificent scenery and a haven for skiing. The Gatsi Dam, Lesotho is the source of South Africa's watershed of rivers. The Katsi Dam, the engineering project of the decade, leaves many a visitor awestruck by its sheer size and beauty. <coughs> a nation with a smile. The Basotho people are warm, friendly, and helpful. Lesotho is a safe and secure holiday destination with little crime and unrest. Our visitors always feel at home. Cultural celebration is encapsulated in daily Basotho life through traditional song and dance, as well as games such as stick fighting and marabaraba, the local chess. Through interaction, visitors can access privileged view of the distinctive cultural dress for Basotho, including the one that my colleague is wearing here. The Morija Arts and Cultural Festival is an annual arts and culture festival in the historic city of Morija every October. Mengkwaning is the birthplace of King Moshasho I, the, the founder of the Basotho Nation. Is the mountain fortress of Moshasho I, and Matsieng is the royal village where the royals are also living. Relics of a prehistoric past, 
Lesotho showcases a history dating back millions of years. Dinosaur footprints and rock paintings are found across Lesotho, include, including the areas such as Subeng, Sukubi, and Uti. Sunny Pass, the top of this great pass from South Africa rewards weary travelers with a refreshing drink at the highest pub in Africa, lying at 2,874 meters above sea level. And the Kome Cave Village. It is a cultural dwelling place which dates back to 1842 and was once home to Lesotho Carnivals. As a government, we acknowledge that safety and security are vital to providing quality in tourism and encouraging repeat visits, investment, and a touring of leisure touring of the country. More than any other e economic activity, the success or failure of a tourism destination depends on being able to provide a safe and secure environment to the visitors. That component is our key feature, and we are proud that Lesotho is a very safe destination. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude by heartily thanking the director of this institute for having given us the opportunity to say these few words about our humble country. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And you all, I will ask you very kindly to remain for now in the uh, podium, yeah. because probably somebody has probably questions, uh, comments, complaints. So please. Hi, um, my name is Paula. I would like you as well if you can stand up and introduce yourself to the. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for the presentation. I have two questions I'd like to ask you. The first is, um, what um, what direct um, actions um, does the, the Lesotho government take to fight um, gender inequality? And the second is, um, there's a lot of mass migration going on in the world in Northern Africa. So um, considering that um, Lesotho is a more stable and peaceful country, um, how, how do you deal with people wanting to come to your country? That, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> let, me, let me start with the second one, mass, mass migration. As, as, as a government, we, we have a very clear policy of migration, which is managed in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Home Affairs. It is governed under a very old legislation, and it has a commission that is housed in the Ministry of Home Affairs. It has a commission and a commissioner for migrants and refugees. So people who are migrating from other countries are welcome in Lesotho. We particularly love economic migrants. Those are most welcome. <laughs> And we, we facilitate, as a matter of principle, their entry, their stay, and we encourage them to behave in order to qualify for citizenship. Those who migrate because of difficulties from their countries of origin are dealt with by a commissioner under the Refugees Act. It's a very old law. Remember that I said in our history, 
we came together as a nation because we were fleeing persecution in some parts of Southern Africa. So we understand the dynamics of being a migrant. Let me strike an example that easily comes to mind. In, 19, in the 1970s, when Africa was a little bit sick, our people were housed in Botswana. And we learned a lot of lessons in the treatment of migrants, particularly who originate from the African continent. In this contemporary times, there were some problems in Zimbabwe. A lot of people had to find some places of opportunity. Some nationals of Zimbabwe came to Lesotho and we did not treat them as refugees. We treated them as people who had visited temporarily until problems were solved at home. Because that is exactly how Botswana treated us when we had problems. We housed South Africans. They were not sent to camps before before 1990, 19-whatever, <laughs> before 1996. We housed them in our homes. None of them were sent to camps. When they, they were attacked by the South African apartheid regime, we died with them because they were living with us in our homes. We died with them and we were buried with them. That is how we deal with migrants and refugees. On the quest for gender balance, gender equality, I have said advisedly that as a country, we have, we have a special arrangement, which is unique to Lesotho, which is unique to Lesotho. Not all of the Western democracies that are developed have legislated. We are one of very few countries who have legislated to enforce gender equality particularly in very crucial component of governance, the local governance. We have actually legislated to ensure minimum of 30% participation by women in politics. In the three organs of the state, we ensure that in the judicature of 12 judges, at least at least four are women. And significantly, the Chief Justice is a woman. The Registrar is a woman. Governor of the Central Bank is a woman. The Speaker of the National Assembly, who has just exited a woman, a young woman, Ambassadors, women ministers, I think they constitute slightly over 30%. MPs, when I was last in parliament, they constituted 31%. They have gone down slightly in this parliament. Maybe it's because I'm not there. <laughs> slightly under 30%. So, 
universal free and compulsory uh, education <coughs> ensures that it is regulated. The, the act that establishes free education is regulated and it ensures that no girl child is left behind. And remember, once you have empowered a girl child academically, you have actually circumvented the possibility of gender parity uh, or gender inequality. It, it automatically uh, circumvents any possibility of that uh, imaging. More women are educated than men. And that gives them a priority over us in the country. So you, you got to relax about gender equality. <laughs> I, I hope that was the, 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 the last one. <laughs> I can I can attempt to answer the the second one while I remember it's a complex question because it is about the complexities of a relationship we we relate extremely well with South Africa because South Africa is one and only neighbor that automatically tells you that as a junior partner, you have to behave in order to maintain a symbiotic economic, social, and political relationship. It is based on sovereign equality of the two states. And let me tell you that you may easily be deceived into thinking that South Africa, because of its economic mind, might, military ability, social diversity, and political stability, is, is, is a giant that has to set and dictate terms. It cannot be like that, because its heartbeat heartbeat is centrally located in the highlands of Lesotho, the supply of water. Surrounded by it has given us an opportunity because we have become a source of its water supply. So any, any, anyone who provides you with life, you are bound to respect. The, the relationship is mutually reciprocal. We, we depend on it for political stability. Remember that its current president is a permanent mediator in case, in case 
politics go wrong in Lesotho? The reason is they have a vested interest. Our instability disrupts their economic activities because people of Lesotho will automatically cross the river into South Africa if there are problems in Lesotho. So it is, it is, it is mutually beneficial that we have a very good relationship so that we maintain peace at all times. So if, for example, a, an undemocratic regime were to, to be a nuisance in South Africa, we would disrupt the water supply. We would, there, there would be problems there. And there would be, we would cause a dysfunction in the Republic of South Africa. Now, the importance of integration is that while you maintain your sovereign independence, you are part of a bigger whole. So being members of SADAC makes it easier to survive in the belly of the giant because you are part of a bigger whole. Decisions that are made in SADAC are concerted efforts that include us. And of course, we are members of Southern African Customs Union, which include South Africa, Botswana. And Botswana used to be very kind to us. Their share of SACU used to be dedicated to us. If they were, they were getting 12 billion, they would take it and disperse it to Lesotho. That is how friendly the Southern African nations are. That is how they easily live side by side with, with each other. Now, South Africa, as you know, went through a period, a long period of persecution. You know the history of apartheid administration. Their first, their first point of salvage, salvation was the frontline states, Lesotho being the first, because the first border you would have to hit would be Lesotho. It would have to be the gateway of escape for leaders, many leaders. Lesotho and Botswana were their exit routes, safe exit routes for Bondate Tabombeki and the rest of them, Bondate Oliver Tambo, who had to flee to lead from extra territory. So we, 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 we have no option, but we, are, we have been bound together by the misfortunes of political life, history, social life. We, we are related, four million of South Africans are Basotho. My relatives have stayed in Botswana and never came back. They are still there. So Botswana is my second home. My mother is a South African. So it is, it is, it is difficult to, to, to fight. It is very difficult to misunderstand each other. I think I have answered your questions in the, in the best manner possible. <laughs> that is how it is. <laughs> Looks like there are no more questions. <laughs> no, we have actually two more. Joseph, you have one? No, uh, to move in the front, you know, I'm going from the... Do you have one, Joseph? Yeah. yeah. And after we will move to you, I'm doing a little bit of Tetris, you know, so... Okay. Uh, Your Excellency, thank you, Joseph, California, United States. Uh, how is the environment being protected? And what are examples of how uh, the physical environment uh, specifically with a lot of the water development projects um, that are happening right now with open. Yeah, I think that is probably the most important question 
because one of my missions in this country is to seek assistance, to seek technical assistance in the protection of the physical world, the physical part, the topography, the environment, and every component of the physical Lesotho. Its topography makes it very susceptible to erosion. And that affects the wetlands, which are the source of water for all downstream countries. That include South Africa, Botswana, Namibia, and, and the estuary is the Indian Ocean. So the source, one of the main sources of water for those countries is Lesotho's Orange River, whose wetland is in the north of Lesotho, in Mohotlo, up, up in the mountains. That is where uh, it originates. That is where Lesotho Highlands Water Project originates. So those wetlands there have to be protected very securely because if they try up, there will be problem with the supply to downstream countries. Now we are looking for any partner who would help in that, in that regard, technically help to ensure that you know, with the emerging, rapidly developing catastrophe of climate change, at least sources of water, important sources of water, not for only the locals, but for the, for the region, are protected and protected securely. So we are looking for people who would help examine the soils that remain and the kind of cover that could be protected to ensure continued protection, particularly of water sources. Other than that, of course, America has intervened by protecting part of, it's a wide area, part of the wetlands up up the stream. We are planting trees, indigenous. We are replanting the indigenous, which had been largely cut down for firewood, burning and overgrazing. And we are trying to replant the grasses. But overgrazing is still a big problem. So we need a comprehensive kind of package for protection. Yes, the government is trying. We developed a new Ministry of Forestry and Land Reclamation, essentially to protect the wetlands. The wetlands. Because a lot of diamonds are going downstream because of erosion. So they end up in the sea and makes it difficult for mining. So we are we, we, we are trying, but I will challenge you to tell me what you think should best be done to further enhance those efforts. We have partnered with the city here, a very small city of uh, Gis Gisland in the in the in the in the in the south of uh, Germany. We are partnering to to reclaim land in the in the north planting some trees we are going to expand to some other areas so i'm challenging all of you to come to my office so that we talk and make it our our common interest that is that
Okay, thank you very much. Probably we have time for the last question, if you don't mind. Please. This is the last of the last of the last, probably. Okay. And yeah, introduce yourself as well. Uh, Lumela, Lumela, Excellency. Lumela and Daddy. My name is Damian. I'm from Indonesia. Thank you for the virtual presentation. I have two questions, actually. Uh, one is about the global warming. Uh, I've been there to the office key. I love it so much. Just one uh, question. Uh, how do you anticipate for the global warming? Is there any investment protector for the uh, this lovely research? And then the second one, uh, I read also the, uh, the news about the hysteria problem from South Africa. The hysteria problem, the food problem. Oh, food problem, yeah. And then, uh, Lesotho, uh, do you import food from South Africa if it does? Uh, how do you anticipate this hysteria problem? Because when the newspaper is really dangerous, uh, it's already 150 people died because of this uh, virus. Yeah. Thank you so much. Excellent. Yes. Uh, in terms of climate change, of course, we are members of a multiple international treaties and organizations that are dealing uh, in matters of climate change. But as a nation, we, we, we are fortunate that we are industrializing quite slowly. And uh, our contribution is not it's not severe. It's not. It's not. It's not too much. And let me strike an example of one of the worst pollutants, energy sources. The bulk of our electricity will soon be green. We we already have almost seventy percent of hydro. Sooner or later, uh, in fact, after the completion of the second phase of Lesotho Highlands, we will be 100% green in terms of energy. And we are going to be supplying the rest of the region with, with the surplus electricity, green electricity. We, uh, as I've said, we, we have a very sector it is it is huge probably one of the uh, one of the largest uh, in the region mm, perhaps second second to south africa and mauritius it, it's quite it's, it's it's quite massive with the employment capacity of about 54000 people relative to a population of less than 2 million so it it is quite quite massive but it is strictly regulated so they, there's there's no there's no disturbing problem of pollution from particularly underground water pollution from the manufacturing uh, sector otherwise the introduction of nationwide electrification projects have significantly reduced the use of dirty sources of energy like firewood it has it has significantly reduced you know the emission of a, a lot of carbon dioxide into into the, the the atmosphere our aviation very short flights twice a day or thrice a day from Maseru to Johannesburg and there are short haul <coughs> small carriers so in terms of the space pollution we are we are we are minimal and i think we we are happy to maintain that standard for for quite some time yes we may be a relief airport soon but it is going to be managed well because it is going to be a cargo destination for southern africa we are we are beginning in fact i think the planning of that uh, physical infrastructure is now complete it, there, there will be a little bit of a move in the aviation but it is not going to be 
a source for for worry because it's it's going to be about cargo so i think essentially that is that is that in terms of tourism promotion it is it is it is it is happening we we have uh, i was talking to my colleagues this morning from botswana and they 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 were supposed to be in lesotho for the excursion this weekend and he tells you it is it is it is happening the african tourism in uh, intracontinent tourism it is happening i think that was the question from our a uh, uh, beautiful lady there it it is it is it is happening in germany is one of the biggest sources of external visitors america and asia on this uh, continental europe germany is a lead continent is a is a lead country in terms of arrivals and we we are improving quite successfully in adding up the numbers so you're going to be our second visitor and you're going to tell indonesia about <laughs> us of course. and everybody in this room is going to talk about lesotho you've, you've, you've seen it and it would be it would be remiss of you if you were not to visit the highest pub in the world <laughs> it, it would be remiss of you so I, I i really have to heartily thank the director for and this institute for this opportunity to have talked to you because talking to one is equal to talking to all the people you know in the world so thank you very much for the opportunity.